Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Wesley Bellman and I'm a cybersecurity consultant. I today will be talking about the Palo Alto Network's wildfire subscription. So I've had a lot of customers recently reach out to me and ask me if wildfire is actually pulling the file out of these packets. It's several packets that are communicating back and forth. Wildfire might be or the user might be downloading a file, which again will take several packets. It'll break up into different packets and it'll download over time to assemble into a file on the end or uploading a file um, to the cloud or to the internet. And the customers really just don't believe that the firewall is able to store that session and build the, fi build the file and extract it from the various packets and then send it to the wildfire cloud for analysis. But that's exactly what it's doing. I understand it's a little bit unbelievable, but that's why it's such an awesome subscription that it's able to extract that file out of multiple packets in a large session and then send it to the cloud for dynamic analysis. And that's really why wildfire is the leading malware analysis capability and the leading capability for detecting zero days and dynamic analysis of files in transit. So, Today I'm going to show you exactly how that works and I'm going to prove to you that that is indeed what it is doing. So let's get started. So what I'll do to demonstrate that the file is indeed being extracted from multiple t packets is I will upload a file which is significantly larger than the maximum size of a packet to Google Drive. And then I will show that Wildfire is able to determine the hash of that particular file. Since the file is larger than the packet size, you will be able to then see that the firewall is extracting the file across multiple packets over a large session and sending it to the Wildfire cloud, which is able to take a hash of that file. Before we get started, I want to show you a couple of configuration items. As you may or may not know, in order for Wildfire to work on your firewall, you need to use a wildfire security object and then apply that to the security policy of concern. In this video, I'm not going to go into that level of detail. However, if you'd like me to make another video showing how to configure wildfire from scratch, please put that in the comments below and I can make that video. What I want to show you is under the device tab. So if I hit device and then under setup wildfire, we can see some details of the wildfire configuration. What I want to focus on here is these checkboxes here. By default, wildfire only logs files which are determined to be malicious. However, if you want to see all of the files which are going through your network, you will need to hit the settings button and check these boxes because if a file is determined to be benign or grayware, then it will only be logged if you check these boxes. Also, I want you to look at the size limit of the different types of files. If you send a file that is larger than this size limit, then the firewall will not send that to wildfire and it will not be analyzed. You can adjust these size limits if you want. You can increase them or decrease them depending on the needs of your network. Now let's quickly go to Google Drive. In order for Wildfire to be able to see the files that are going to an encrypted website, such as Google Drive, as you can see here, the protocol is HTTPS and not just HTTP, you'll need to set up decryption so that the firewall can decrypt the packets sent to an encrypted website. I already have decryption set up, and again, I'm not going to go into details of how to set up decryption in your firewall. However, again, feel free to put that in the comments below if you'd like me to do that. I'm just going to show you that decryption is properly set up. So I'm going to click this lock icon and then connection is secure and then the certificate icon. And here you can see that this particular certificate is issued by decrypt.evenstarsec.local, which is the certificate authority I have to issue certificates on decrypted traffic. Now let's take a look at the files that we are going to upload to Google Drive. Here in Microsoft PowerShell, I have opened the directory where the files are at, and I will now list them. As you can see, I have four demo files. Three are just for demo purposes. The fourth one is a map of Jacksonville, Florida, where I live. I will also show you these files here in the file explorer. We'll even open the Jacksonville map. And here you can see you have a pretty map of Jacksonville, Florida. 
Wildfire hashes the files with the SHA-256 algorithm. So let's figure out what the SHA-256 of the Jacksonville map is. The PowerShell command for that is get file hash path Jacksonville map tag algorithm SHA-256. You can see it starts with B16F and ends with 4724. We'll need to remember that later. Another thing that we can check is to make sure that the file is not too large to be analyzed by wildfire. So as you can see, this file is almost 10 megabytes. So if I go back to my firewall and I see here that PDFs are only going to send by default if they are smaller than three megabytes. So I will go in and increase that number, let's say to 15. And I will commit that change. The change has completely committed. So now let's upload those files and see what happens. I will go to the monitor tab here. And under wildfire submissions, you can see that none of those files have yet been submitted to wildfire. So now I will go to Google Drive, pull down a timer, and first I will upload the Jacksonville map. The file's been uploaded, let's start the timer. And while we're at it, I will upload the other three files as well. Okay, after two minutes and 42 seconds, you can see that the Jacksonville map did appear in the log. The demo MSI appeared earlier, almost two minutes prior, so almost immediately, and that's because this is a file that I had used during testing, so it had already seen this file, and due to the cache, it was able to immediately classify it and determine the other information. In the wildfire log, you may need to add the information for the hash in order to do that. You go to one of the columns here, you select the drop down, and then under columns, you select file digest. That would be the value for the hash. And if you remember, this is indeed the hash. So it starts with B16F and it ends in 4724. So I was able to prove that the firewall was able to extract that file in transit upload it to the wildfire cloud, which was able to determine its hash. Now it's been a couple more minutes and you can see that the demo Excel file and demo doc file also were processed. So that took about four to five minutes for those files to process. In all, all four of these files were processed in less than five minutes and wildfire was able to complete its analysis and determine that all four of them were benign. So there you have it. The firewall was able to do exactly what it claims to be able to do, which was to extract that file from the network traffic Traffic, despite those files being much larger than the maximum packet size of 64 kilobytes. Therefore, we know that despite the fact that that file is being transferred over several packets, the firewall is able to store that session and extract the file before sending it on to wildfire. We were able to see that the hash is matched with specifically that map of Jacksonville. So we know that indeed the wildfire received the proper file and that the hash was correct. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And if you have any other things that you want to see with Palo Alto firewalls, please put them in the comments below. Thank you.